What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and last week Southern Sky Motors, the place where I bought my Lamborghini Gallardo LP560 Bicolore from, where I completed the Lamborghini dream, which is, is in there, um, invited me down to drive this, their new car that they've got in stock, which is a 2015 Mercedes AMG GTS. Now, two months ago, if I was asked to drive this car, I probably wouldn't be that excited about it. I wasn't a big fan of it. I thought that it was too soft. I thought that it actually looked like an SLK shooting brake concept car. If you just imagine that, it kind of looks a little bit like it. <laughs> but since spending time with one up in Manchester, the AMG GTS Edition 1 with the carbon wing, I kind of fell in love with it. The interior has always wowed me and I always think that Mercedes produce luxurious interiors. And it got me thinking, the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560 is similar sort of money to this car. Even though it's four years old, what would you prefer to buy? A second-hand Lamborghini or a nearly new Mercedes super sports car? This is not a direct replacement to the SLS AMG, which was a 6.2 litre, even though it said 6.3. Um, this is actually a four litre twin turbo car. Mercedes produced this car um, just after the SLS ceased production. Um, and I have to say, it is a stunning looking car when you get up close when you get up close and personal with it. And this specification on this particular one is one not to be ignored. So let's just have a look around the car. Try and work out some of the really nice features that you could get inside and outside, as opposed to the Lamborghini. I've spent quite a lot of time in the Lamborghini recently, driving up to Manchester and back over the weekend. So I thought, why not compare the two cars? The AMG GTS. And I have to say for a twin turbo car, this sounds pretty good. C63, the new one, um, but the specification, white, black wheels, red brake calipers, and it's actually got black and red interior as well. This car is absolutely stunning from the outside. You get this lovely little badge here, by turbo which obviously um, proves that this car is turbocharged. So why not start with comparing the looks on this car to the Lamborghini, as the Lamborghini that I bought from Southern Sky Motors is pretty much the same price as this. They're both white. And they've both kind of got a black roof as well. So would I have the Lamborghini over this based on looks? The Gallardo is a 10, 11 year old car now. Um, and they facelifted it in 2008, which is what mine is. Even though it's a 2011 car, the facelift happened in 2008. So that makes it seven, nearly eight years old, my facelift. Whereas this being a 2015 car, is only two to three years old. I think these cars came out in 2014 or they were launched in 2014. Would I have this over the Lamborghini based on looks? Nothing to do with the engine, nothing to do with the brand. I think I'd have the Lamborghini over this car. This car is very pretty, it's very soft and it's got a lot of curves, but the Lamborghini is a little bit more aggressive. And I feel that the Lamborghini's also got some shoulders as well onto the car. It looks like it's been to the gym, whereas if you zoom down there, it kind of just finishes and curves off into the back of the car where my car, if I can get my finger, kind of points out there, which is, uh, which is a lot more aggressive. So unlike the SLS, this car has normal doors like the Lamborghini. So Lamborghini obviously produced the Murcielago, the Aventador, the Diablo, the Countach with the doors that go up. Then they produced the Gallardo and the doors went out. Everyone complained. When Mercedes announced that they were going to launch this car after the SLS, everyone thought that it was going to have gullwing doors. It didn't, and everyone complained. I have to say it is one of the most beautiful places that you could probably sit behind the wheel piloting a car. If you look at the seats, Mercedes have absolutely nailed the design. The different two-tone colours here on this specific spec is amazing. Um, the stitching here, like, just, I've never seen that on a car before. But my overall favourite bit about this whole interior is the centre console. I'm going to sit inside now. This is... Oh, it does feel low. It feels low, but not as low as the Lamborghini. The seats, however, are a lot more comfy and a lot more spongy. But here we have the centre console, which is by far the coolest looking spaceship, futuresque, center console that you have ever seen so the sun is currently um blocking i'm just gonna put my hand here very very professional of me um and you get a massive screen here which gives you the radio the sat nav and all of the different elements that you can get in this car we've got a bit of 
Storage. Oh, my God, cup holders. Okay. The, Lam the Lamborghini's interior does not have cup holders. This has cup holders. It immediately wins. Immediately wins. Okay, so we've done the exterior of the car. To me, the Lamborghini wins that round based on the looks of the car. I think the Mercedes-AMG GT wins the round of the interior. What do you get for £120,000? Inside, you get your money's worth. In the Lamborghini, it's kind of dated. The actual sat-nav screen is exactly the same as the R8, which I hate. Um, so, it's one all. Now, I suppose what the next thing to do is suction you up to the windscreen, take this car for a drive, and see how it handles, see which wins on the engine, the handling, the overall drive, and the overall experience. Does this car feel £120,000? Is it worth the money? Is the Lamborghini worth the money? Who knows? I'm about to find out. Ooh. Do you... It's in Sport Plus now, so it makes it sound epic. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you so, put it in comfort mode, it's mental. It just literally turns everything off. Comfort's here. Comfort's there. So, yeah. Let me just, I'm going to put the window down. So this is in Sport Plus. And that's comfort. <laughs> wow. That's like having the valves like I have on the on the Lamborghini. So, oh, it's got race mode as well. Race mode as well. We won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly feel the imposing bonnet on this thing when you drive it, don't you? It has got a massive bonnet. Love the Alcantara little inserts on the steering wheel. That is a nice feature. <laughs> what a way to cruise around. It is. <laughs> <It's done>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got Grant in the passenger seat here that is off camera at the moment. Um, and these are my first few meters, yards, half miles in the AMG GTS. And firstly, we are driving it in sport. It is quite a lot softer on the suspension as my Lamborghini. There isn't settings in the Lamborghini to change around, muck around with the suspension. And maybe that's something that Lamborghini do as a brand or is it because the car is slightly older, whereas this car, you've got so many different settings. I think you've got five settings because you've also got race there. As to how stiff you want the suspension, how responsive you want the throttle, how good you want the steering, how direct you want the steering, um, and also how loud you want the exhaust system. So that is definitely an advantage of buying the newer car. The SLS AMG, for me, it felt like a 21st century American muscle car and getting behind the wheel of this car having the long nose in front and having the really really aggressive vent it reminds me a little bit of the Ford Mustang that I drove in Germany not by the way that this car sticks to the road and the way that it handles but just the views that you have in this car it is quite American muscle with the massive massive engine and long nose at the front rear wheel drive big engine and a really really nice rumble try and make it manual. It's seven gears, I've just found that out because I clicked the paddle. Okay, those gear shifts are... The feel of the gear shifts are non-existent. The gear shifts are obviously existent because I just changed gear. Let's try and go down. Put it into Sport Plus to get the valves open. Oh, wow. <laughs> the valves literally do open. Oh my god, that is something that you don't get in the Lamborghini, that is for sure. Anyone that's been in a Gallardo, driven a Gallardo, or even owned a Gallardo, will know that the one thing that you do not get in that car, regardless of how smooth you try to drive it, are smooth gear shifts. There's a little bit of water on the road there, and experienced enough to know that AMGs with water on the road, <laughs> yeah. they don't go well together. <laughs> As cruising around the countryside goes, and I know this is a really, really bad comparison because the Lamborghini and this car aren't the same cars, they shouldn't even be in the same category, and I don't know why I'm comparing them. I'm comparing them because they're the same price tag. 
but this car obviously cruises better than the Lamborghini. Anyone that asks me how I'm finding the Lamborghini, I absolutely love it, but at low speeds, the car is not built for driving slow. And the one thing that I notice with the SLS is how close you are to the wing mirrors. And I don't know whether I like that, I'm not sure whether I'm comfortable with the wing mirrors being right there. The Lamborghini there, a little bit further away, you get a nice view of the shoulders of the car, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The Lamborghini has certainly got a more aggressive profile as you go down the rear and the side of the car. This car just kind of curves away, it just tucks its ass behind itself and kind of doesn't really want to get in the way, which is fair enough, but I like having a nice view, not only my car, but also the actual view of what you need to see. I definitely don't stare at my wing mirror and look at my own car. <laughs> I reckon, I still don't think I would, 
I still don't think I would swap as good of a car as this is and I know that I've been comparing the two cars throughout this video because they are in the same sort of ballpark figure they are two completely different cars the Lamborghini still makes my back sweat it still makes me it still gets my blood pumping it still makes my ears bleed and it still excites me every time I get and sit in that car it isn't the best in its class and I would say that this car probably is a better car to drive and it has a lot more features and it is a lot more nicer it's a lot nicer put together it's a lot better what's the right sentence it's more well made but again that's German versus Italy um, but I, I still think I've got many many miles to cover in the Lamborghini before I think it's time to change is my serious and sensible answer as this question goes I'd still have the Lamborghini I think I'd still have the Lambo which is props to the Lamborghini it being what the car four years old but the Gallardo in general like ten years old so that proves how good that car is as being a pantomime, as being a supercar. So there we go, that is the drive in the AM, oh, good start. That is the drive in the AMG GTS, and what a car it is. I mean, to get behind the wheel, thank you to Sun Sky Motors for allowing me to get behind the wheel. Um, beautiful spec, and of course, it is for sale here. Um, I don't know, like, I'm really like, oh, I'd, would I get one? Maybe in, maybe in four or five months. I do like this car and it is definitely a contender for the next car. With the amount of miles that I'm intending to do next year on many, many road trips, I think this is going to be a pretty awesome car to consider. So thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And there's going to be a lot more supercar content to come, both here at Southern Sky Motors when they get some pretty awesome cars coming in January. Um, but also hopefully I'm going to have the chance to drive the Aston Martin Farage in there if it doesn't sell before then. So that is it. I will see you very, very soon for another video on Supercars of London. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. The cars that they have got in, not my Lamborghini. So we've got the resident resident TBR there. We've got the 16M here, which is having some work done. There's the bumper over there. Um, so it doesn't really look like a 16M. We've got a Rolls Royce here, which is massive. A huge Gumball 3000 logoed up heater, Ooh. which is actually heating up my car, which is behind the camera over there. And we've got a dub blue Aston Martin.